Bibles, turn to the book of Ephesians, the third chapter. We have uh, talked about the fact that God predestined a time for the Gentiles, how that He had chosen the house of Israel, and how that God uh, had blessed Brother Paul to go into Ephesus and to see a church born. And uh, we know that he had a terrible time there in Ephesus. And we've told you that you can read a lot about his ministry there in the, in the city of Ephesus and the church of Ephesus that was born in the book of Acts from chapter 18 up to about chapter 21. In that section, you'll find him uh, a lot of his ministry that took place. And you'll, you'll find out how that the silversmiths, uh, they, made, they made lots of money money and uh, they uh, they entertained the world that was then Asia Europe the ministry had got there into those lands and they were coming in but but of the, the great idolatry and the, the great uh, worshiping of this idol Diana and and the, the very grossness of of uh, the things that took place there in Ephesus. And uh, they were very mean to Apostle Paul. They, uh, they done everything they could to get rid of him. But God sustained him. But uh, the activities that uh, was conducted or was allowed there in that great temple The grossness of the immorality that uh, was nothing but open. I mean, it was just these people were given to to this goddess Diana,ty and they they claimed her as a goddess of fertility. So it was a very sensual, sexual atmosphere uh, in the land there. And uh, during all of this ugliness, this all of this sinfulness. There was one of the greatest revival broke out there in the city of Ephesus. It was a it was a, a highly um, industrial place. A lot, like I said, of Europe and everywhere out of Asia, they came in there, and it was a great place of industrial strength. But uh, there was kind of a war going on between the devil and God there in Ephesus, and Paul and the church paid a great price but there were so many that were saved from their sinfulness but uh, there was something else that Apostle Paul had on his heart that was a great burden for him and that was that the the Jews they did not want to fellowship with the Gentiles they they did not want to give them the welcome into the family of God they didn't want uh, the dogs of the Gentiles to be a part of God's blessing and family. And Apostle Paul taught them. Uh, he journeyed there twice after he uh, uh, was able to give birth to the church. And we've talked about that. But uh, how that the church was born in such an unusual way. But God blessed it. But then Apostle Paul had this problem that existed there between the Jews and the Gentiles. And he had a great part of his ministry dedicated in his last days there in Rome before they killed him. To, to try to persuade them and to try to lighten up their eyes to where they could see that God loves everybody. And the family of God was bigger than what the Jews wanted to accept. And how that it was a special time of grace that God uh, had blessed humanity with. And the Gentiles were grafted into the church. And 
I guess I told you there in the chapter 4, you know, when he talks about the 13th verse there, we can go there before we start into our reading this evening. But this is the very focus and the burden that Apostle Paul had. He didn't want to see the, the ministry that had been accomplished, the church that had been born, and the house of Israel. He didn't want this conflict that was going on. And this is the key verse to everything that Paul wanted to get through to their hearts. It said, till we all come, everybody, till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure and the stature of the fullness of Christ. Now we're gonna, you're gonna understand this verse a lot better when we get through teaching. I hope this evening, but we need to understand. You know, there there are so many people that call themselves Christians, and so many denominations on the earth that disagree and they fight amongst themselves, and they don't agree, and they make a big issue out of it. Uh, I would like to say to all of my children here in the church, I kind of feel like that God has kind of put me in a position to try to lead you in the right direction. Uh, don't get caught up in fighting another denomination. Don't get up in struggling with other people that don't agree with you. That's what was going on here in Ephesus. But if I was to give you any, if this was the last words that I would ever speak to you before I go on to heaven, I would say, let the peace of God rule. Let the love of God be bigger than any factor or any, any portion of trouble that we ever have to face. Don't add to the problem. Don't add to the strife and the struggling and the separation and the dissension that the devil wants in the church. You know, I've seen so many beautiful works of the Lord in my lifetime destroyed and tore down because the devil was able to get inside of the hearts and the minds of the body of Christ and it caused trouble. I, I remember a church, uh, and I think probably Brother Darcy uh, may have been involved there some with that church, but not at that time. But I remember uh, going there to preach and to sing one night and God was blessing. And... Uh, but I saw a church split right there in one of the most Holy Ghost filled services that I'd been in in a long time there that night. But the devil was sitting right there in the church. And he got a fight started amongst a lot of the young people and that carried into the parents. And before it all ended up, there was nothing but turmoil and dissension and the whole church busted up. Now they've, they've in years, they've gathered back, I think, and they've tried to start another work. But uh, I've seen it more than once. I've, I've seen it uh, happen several times. And I've seen the leaders of churches. And, and I don't know why I'm into all this, but I think it's important that you hear this. I've seen a lot of the leaders. And uh, I've been part of that where they didn't want you to be there any longer. They made decisions up in their uh, corporate offices and amongst a few that they thought were very strong brothers in the church and have made decisions that have come down and closed down churches, shut down the fellowship that was in places. And uh, I think that's what burdened Apostle Paul so much with Ephesus is that for everything that God had done in such a wicked, adulterous time, and such a church that had been built and the thousands of souls that had been saved that the devil was trying to slip in and trying to separate the church. He said, we're all one. 
And it's by grace. It's not by the law anymore. It's by grace. And that's what we've got to understand. You don't hold no special position in, in the family of God. You're here because of the grace of God just like I am. Amen. Amen. Now there's many gifts of the Spirit and sometime we're going to teach on that. But there's many gifts of the Spirit that the children of God ought to seek. We ought to have them alive in the church. There are, there are many facets of who we are. But the ministry of God is the most important thing. And if we fail there, children, we'll face God uh, with our failures one of these days. I don't want to face, face Him with a, a list of failures. I want to face Him with good things and accomplishments. Amen. And uh, that's what we need to understand is in your personal relationship in the church of the living church of Jesus Christ, it ought to be a time of love and peace and good work not of hatred and wrath and sedition and, and violence and dissension Yet your time don't judge your relationship in the church by anybody else you may have a brother or a sister that kind of gets out of the spirit but that's no reason for you to and I, I have dealt with that since we've started this church four years ago I've had to deal with it with some of the brothers that are not here and the sisters that are not here because you know I didn't make it a big open show out in the uh, amongst everybody, but I dealt with them over issues that they were wrong and they were hurting another brother or another sister. And I will tell you as much as I love any of you, if you start doing something wrong in the church, you'll eventually see Brother Leston knocking on your door. And I'll talk with you. And you may not agree with with what uh, the way I approach it. Now, I'm a little different maybe than most people, but I believe that the best thing for you to do is just be straight up and deal with the issue and let God's Word be the final say in everything we do. And that's what we've got to do. We've got to understand that the very, the very burden that was on Paul's heart was that the unity of the faith be dominant. Your faith, your love for Christ ought to dominate any situation. I don't care how wrong I am, you ought to love me to death. I don't care how wrong you are, I ought to love you to death. Love will solve it. Love will calm the fears that will take hold of your heart. But let's, let's get in here and let's read just a little bit in the third chapter. He's talked about the fellowship of the mystery of Christ. And we all know that that's the love. We've been teaching that. We've taught four books. This is the fourth book of Paul that he wrote from Rome. And it's all about the love of God. And it's all about the great mystery of God. The great mystery of God that was hid from all of the ages, all of the prophets. It's now revealed through grace in the church, the living church. And he talks about the fellowship of this mystery and how, how wonderful it is. But then when we get down, we, I think we stopped somewhere around the 11th verse. We'll read the 11th verse and then we're going to go on down in the 3rd chapter because uh, I think it's important that we understand what our brother is wanting them to hear. And he wants us to hear it. Our Heavenly Father, bless your precious word. God, enlighten us to your light. Lord, you said if we walk in the light as you are in the light, Lord, that we shall have fellowship one with another and that your blood would cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Heavenly Father, let us understand that it's the fellowship, it's the light, and walking in love that will accomplish your will. In Jesus' name. Amen. It says, according to the eternal purpose which he purposed in Christ Jesus our Lord. Now this is the whole purpose of what God wanted. God wanted a people. God didn't want division. God wanted unity. God wanted love. God wanted peace. God wanted you to touch him by faith. It says, in whom we have boldness and access 
with confidence by faith of Him. Aren't you glad that you can seek the Lord? Isn't it wonderful to, to know in your heart that I have access to God Almighty? Brother Randy, there's nothing more wonderful in the world than to know that you can talk to God. I can talk to Him. You can talk to Him, Brother Ernie. The most wonderful thing, Sister Normie, is that you can be in your bedroom by yourself or out in the yard and just talk to Him. Isn't it wonderful? Sister Judy, the most wonderful thing in the world is when you have a need is to just be able, wherever you're at, just to call on Him and know that He hears you. But he said right here that we ought to have boldness and access with confidence. This is the key right there. It's got to be with confidence by the faith of him. Faith is evidence. Faith is substance. You hold it. You have it. You know it. It said, Wherefore I desire that you faint not at my tribulations for you, which is your glory. He said, I'm here in prison. I'm facing death at Nero's block, the emperor of Rome. They've convicted me. They've condemned me. I'm chained to a guard, and they change my guard every four hours. There's never any rest for me in my burden, but he said, I don't want that to be part of what troubles you. We leave that into God's hand. God's doing a good job taking care of me. That's what Apostle Paul is trying to tell them. That's not the burden that you should be bearing. He said what you've got to understand is the problem that you have in the church where there's not unity. He said you've got to understand that we've got to fellowship with God by faith. He said, for this cause I bow my knees. He got down and he was praying. He was saying a prayer here for the church. He wanted them to know that he's before God, seeking God. He don't want them to be troubled with his troubles. He wants them to seek the Lord for the needs of the church. And sometimes I think we get so carried away with our own life that we forget about our brothers and sisters in our neighborhood and our communities and the needs that they have. And I'll tell you what, and, and my wife will tell you, it gets, it gets overwhelming sometimes. Sometimes we get so many calls, and especially her. I, I, she is absolutely a, uh, a focus point for a lot of people, and I thank God that she has that, that entrance into their lives, but it's all the time. They're calling her and wanting her to have us to pray and, and wanting the church to pray for their needs. And that's what Apostle Paul is saying is the important thing. It's not about the little trouble he's had facing death and being in prison like he is. He's saying the, pro the, the big problem that I get on my knees for and talk to the Lord is about the whole family in heaven and earth. He said that he would grant you, he pray, he's praying, he's talking to God, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory. He's saying he has a storehouse full of riches and glory. He's saying, I'm praying that he would give it to you to be strengthened with might. How many of you want to be strong in the Lord? Amen. You want to be strong? Well, that's where you're going to find it. You're going to find it in the riches by your faith. He said to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. I was talking to a man yesterday and he was talking about how that uh, the spirit doesn't move in the churches like it used to. He's, he was talking about how that people used to get caught up in the Spirit and, and God would use them and the Spirit of God would move in with the needs that they had in their church. But he said, I'm not experiencing that like I used to. 
And he was talking about the pride that was in the church and how the people are not as humble as they used to be and how the people are so caught up in their own cares that they don't really see the needs of others. And uh, I, I would have to agree with him as a majority here today in the world that we live in. There's so many other things that are more important than what we should give glory to God for. It takes precedence. You got to be careful that your life doesn't get overwhelmed mm -hmm. with personal ideas and not be able to glorify God the way you should. He said that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. You see down inside of every one of you, there's an inner man. You're who you are. And that's where God's work is accomplished. It's how strong you are in your heart towards God. You know, I've seen so many stumble. I've seen so many get defeated. I've seen so many quit along the way. You know, you know, we've heard a song or two that we've heard sung in the past. You know how they're struggling to try to get through life and get to heaven. And, you know, uh, but I've, I've seen it so many times. But I'll say this to to you because I've said it I've, I've talked to Jack a lot about this and I've said Jack it's not about your words that you speak it's how strong you are getting in here and I'll say to you every one of my brothers and sisters here your success in God's mission and your success in your relationship with God will be according to your faith in your inner man however strong you are and you can be as strong as you want to the spirit of God wants to be in your heart it wants to dominate your heart it wants to control you lead you guide you into all righteousness it said that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith that ye being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all the saints and this is, right here is the magnitude of how big God is. To know what is the breadth, how far does God go? <laughs> Where does it end, brother? There is no end. But he said that you may be able to comprehend with all of the saints what is that love that reaches to the farthest corners and tips of everything and it still goes. There is no end to God's love. But he said that you inside your heart will know how far God's love reaches how long it is don't make no difference how long the trial is or the journey or the path that you're trying God's love will go way beyond where you're going amen, amen. and the depth it's deeper than any thought any trial any trouble any problem that you'll ever have God's love goes way down below that sister Judy his love is deeper than you'll ever need it. And the height. Bless your heart. Glory to God. His love is bigger. It's higher. It's wider. It's longer. Bless your heart, brother Darcy. He'll carry you through to the end. Amen. How many of you can say amen to that? How many of you want to get stronger? Hallelujah. You want to get stronger. Let the Spirit of God and His love, let your faith. It's not about anybody else. It's not about any part of life that you have a problem with. It's about you and God and how big He is. And you understand that He gives every bit of Himself to you. It's yours. God is yours. And to know the love of Christ, which passeth knowledge. You know, uh, the scriptures talks about seeking wisdom. And it says along with getting all your wisdom, get knowledge. It's a wonderful thing to know. And sometimes it really boggles my mind 
to know how brilliant and how intelligent some people's brain is. I mean, it's, it's unbelievable how far this thing goes. But he said, His love passeth any thought, anywhere, anything that has ever been accomplished in knowledge. His love goes beyond that. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah, what a great God. That ye might be filled with all the fullness of God. Bless your heart. I have been in places at times in my life that I knew God was where I was. I knew God was there to do something great. And I've seen God do some great things. I've seen God heal people that could not walk. I've seen that. It's not every time we pray for that that we get to see that. But I have seen God do some miracles that I never thought could ever happen. But I've seen God do it. God can do anything. Children, there is no limits Amen. to the greatness of God. Brother Ernie, I don't care how baffled you may be about a situation. God's bigger than that situation, Sister Normie. Amen. Brother Larry, he'll go with you even when the old tractor flips upside down. And nobody's out there to help you. He'll be there to help you, Brother Neil. Yeah. We know. We've seen God. But I'll tell you, I've seen God do some things. i seen a little baby one time that was so hot. And they had had the child in the hospital. And the hospital had sent it home to die. And I remember I was holding a revival over in a high at the, in this community. And at the end of the service, these people were waiting outside the door and they wanted to know if we believed in divine healing. And uh, of course we told them that we did. And they said their baby was dying and uh, they didn't have anywhere else to go but to the Lord. And we went up there and we went up on that porch and they brought that little baby out there on the porch about 9.30 or 10 o'clock at night. And I, I, you would have had to have been there to see this little baby and how lifeless but how hot and how burning up it was. And we prayed the prayer of faith. We read the book of James about how that if there were sick among us, let them call for the ill. We, we, we done all of that. And there have been many times that I've prayed over people and didn't get the answer that I wanted. But I remember that night praying over this baby and while we were there, it's like the baby got soaking wet in our hands. And the little baby opened its eyes. Everything changed in that baby. That baby didn't have to heal up. It was already healed. It didn't have to get well. Brother Ernie, it was well. God is greater than anything. It's about God. It's about the Spirit. It's about your faith. It's about serving a big God. You know, sometimes I think people think God, are, God is as small as they are. And they can't trust God for anything bigger than they think they can work out with their own hands. But that's where God starts. Amen. 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 God is a healer. God is a provider. Jehovah Jireh is my God's name. He can do anything. Whatever your need is. That's what God can do. It says, now unto him. This is the prayer of Paul that they would hear this. Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly, exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or think. Can you imagine the promise of God that it's above anything you can even think? That's who my God is. I serve a big God, Brother Ernie. 
Hallelujah. I wish I could shout. I'd shout all over this place tonight. That's how big God is. He can do exceedingly, abundantly above all that we ask or think. So don't ever, ever be intimidated when the, the need is great and it looks bad and the clouds are dark. Just say the prayer of faith. Leave it in God's hands. He'll do the rest. If the healing comes, it won't be because of you. It'll be because of Him. And it'll be because you touched Him. And He does here. But He said He's able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us. And let me tell you, children, there is nothing greater than the power of Almighty God. Amen. Amen. Unto Him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages. And then He makes this statement, a world without end. You know, I've heard so many talk about the end of the world. Let me tell you, there's not going to be an end. We're eternal. God's eternal. There's going to be an end of an age. There's going to be an end of grace. There was an end of the law. But there will never be an end of the world. And he said, Amen. Even so. Do we all agree on that? Yes. Do you love God? Amen. Do you know how big He is? Praise God. He's bigger than anything you can even think. Let us stand. Don't you love Him? Jesus, our Heavenly Father, bless Your Word. God, enlarge our hearts. God, give us the faith to do the impossibles. God, help us, Lord, to be a light that shines in the darkness of this world to people that have big needs. Lord, let us lighten the way for somebody that's having trouble. God, let our little church up here be a place of victory. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.